The Gold Master Series from Digital Eclipse uh, tells the stories of video game history, legendary designers and teams and studios, and it preserves and restores classic games with the respect that we feel that they deserve. The first entry in the Gold Master series is called The Making of Karatika. It is all about Karatika, which is a game that Jordan Mechner released in 1984 for the Apple II computer. We really wanted to present the original versions of Karatika in their best possible light. I, th I think why some of this work is so important is because it's Im almost impossible for somebody to get their hands on an Apple II, get their hands on a disk drive that works, find a copy of Karatika that isn't corrupt because it's on a magnetic media disc, and then play the game with a joystick that is anywhere in the shape it needs to be. It's just impossible for people to play these games as they were intended to be played. So our approach has always been, put the original game on there, but also let's work extremely hard on the interface for these games. Let's work hard on making the experience feel exactly how somebody felt in the day when they picked up a joystick, which was the leading edge technology, and get that experience and that feeling. What we try to do here is we try to recreate the feeling of playing those games that you had back then, or if you're at, sitting at a console. So it's not just a matter of emulating the game and getting the correct pixel on the screen. It's presenting that pixel in a way that, cre that is an entire experience. If you look at the back of the box on Karatika, uh, you notice something, which is that the ground is a color that the Apple II could not make, and it's a gray, that it couldn't be combined with the palette that was used in that screen. And that's because it was a photograph of a CRT monitor and what the game was intended to look like. So Mike Micah, our president, and uh, you know, uber fan of the classic genres, he saw this and he said, we need to do that too. And so we actually check every pixel in this region when you're playing on the Apple II. And if it sees this particular color pattern, which on a CRT would become gray, we make it gray for you. So it is one of the you know, extra miles, extra steps that we try to go to, to see the vision through and preserve an element that might be lost if you're just making sure that the right pixel is shown on screen. We have the settings for the Apple II that allow you to uh, view the game as if you're watching on a monochrome monitor and the different colors. We have green, we have amber, we have black and white, and we have full color as well. That's something we did uh, just to make sure that uh, this was a very authentic uh, version of the game uh, for all types of uh, Apple II monitors. We'll do frame boosting. So that allows the game to not run at maybe 12 frames a second, but run at something a little more um, consistent with modern games. We'll do things like uh, filter audio so it sounds like it's the speaker coming through the hardware and what ends up at your ears is the sound you should be hearing. We do all these things and there's a tremendous amount of work to do that in order to get it to feel as good as it would have felt to somebody in 1984. One of the main things that we, we add to every game is extra settings and, and different options. And there's certainly plenty of those in Karatika. So of course we've got stuff like saving and loading wherever you want. We've got a rewind feature in case you accidentally get punched or kicked too many times. So one of the coolest extras that we've added uh, to the making of Karatika is how we handle the replay system or the watch mode for uh, the games. Uh, you're able to uh, navigate by chapter so that lets you sort of jump around the replays right to the moments uh, that are most important to you. So for example, uh, in Karatika uh, for the Apple II, we have a replay system where you can just jump right to, let's say, the bird battle towards the end. Uh, and then, of course, you can take over the game at that point. Um, after you watch the battle, you can rewind it, you can take over, and then you can try to do that battle yourself. And the, the thing I'm most excited about is uh, we actually have a director commentary for the Apple II version. So when you're watching the playthrough, you'll hear from Jordan Mechner uh, and his father, Francis Mechner, who did the soundtrack. Um, and you'll hear their insight and their behind the scenes stories as you're watching. You can see how the animation slows down every time the gate moves. And you can even play from Digital Eclipse's president, Mike Micah. It's called Karatika Remastered. It is Karatika for, you know, modern consoles um, with a lot of improvements and updates and cut content while really trying to maintain the core, you know, of what made Karatika, you know, so good in the first place. More than just porting the game and trying to modernize it, I wanted to understand why, outside of the three core versions of Karatika, I really want to understand why every other version of Karataka was so bad. <laughs> I hate to say that, but they were bad. And it was 
uniquely bad. There were several ports of Karataka that were just so uniquely bad that I actually wanted to walk through the process and share that process with people as to how that could have happened. And if we're gonna tell a story about the making of Karataka, it, seem, it, it would seem odd that we wouldn't tell the story of the making of the remaster of Karataka. In short time, I restructured the project so that we could have a running commentary during the game. I, I wanted to make sure that the, that the remaster kept up with the rest of the product. As you go through and play the game, you will be able to hear Mike talking about what he was thinking, what he was trying to do uh, at that stage of the game. And he's very honest about what he did right and what he did wrong, where he thinks the game succeeds, where he thinks even his own remaster falls short. That kind of candor is not something that I see very often. And it's not just Karataka that we've remastered because there's also Death Bounce Rebounded, which takes Jordan's original uh, shooting game prototype that he was doing before Karataka and transforms it uh, into a uh, fast, furious twin stick shooter. We started working on this project and we knew we wanted to do something uh, unique. I was just happy to be here. I would have been happy making coffee, doing some localization system. I'd be perfectly happy. No. We were assigned to remake a game that had never been seen by the world that was designed by one of my favorite developers of all time. I grew up on Karataka and I grew up on Prince of Persia and, and to see a game, just to see a game that Jordan Mechner had made and then be told to reimagine it, make it again from the ground up with a modern design aesthetic, I mean, that's a dream project. It's a dream project. What a, what a way to start your existence here at Digital Eclipse. Jordan basically abandoned the game, the publisher abandoned the game, and we thought, well, wait a minute, why would we even create this? Why would we remaster this game? Because it's, it's basically been thrown away. Then we thought about it again, and with all this history and all of the data that we had, including all of the journals from Jordan, uh, we were able to take all that information and say, wait a minute, why the hell wouldn't we do this? You know, why wouldn't we do this game? Because we have all of the information that we need to actually bring it to the finish line. So we were able to see some of his thoughts that were never implemented in Death Bounce. And uh, we implemented what everything that he had ever mentioned. And some things were just one-offs. One but we had two enemies in the game that he never implemented called the Sparkle and the Twinkle. And we got those names from the journal. Uh, those were words that he used at one point or another to describe what those things either might do or might be called. Uh, every other enemy was based on an enemy that he had implemented, he had made. I mean, we, we tried to, to work within the same constraints Jordan was working for Death Mounts, where the sprites themselves are exactly the same as what he was using. And the other step was we looked at what Jordan did with Karataka. He was really in, interested in making a cinematic experience, and Death Mounts really wasn't that at all. It was this straightforward shooter inspired by asteroids and it didn't have any cinematic qualities but we wanted to sort of bring some of that into Death Bounce and that's why we created the sort of intro sequences and the sequences where you see the ship fly up to the train um, you know and and add a, a sort of text crawl storyline um, and you know basically add a little bit more of a cinematic quality to it and initially we had a control system that was based on the original controls where you would rotate the ship you would thrust around, and we had refined that um, to a point where it felt good, it felt a lot better. We had a lot more frames to work with, a lot more uh, better frame rate to work with. Um, but eventually, uh, Jeremy tried a uh, twin stick shooting style, and as soon as we added that twin stick shooting, it was like, holy crap, this is actually really fun. <laughs> I just re remembered when we were demoing it for Jordan, that was an experience because, of course, I never met, met him before and I played his games, I'm a, I'm a fan, and I was tasked with uh, demoing Death Bounce for him, he'd never seen it. After we finished that demo, he was just, he loved it, and he had very complimentary things to say about it. He, I think he always thought Death Bounce had been left to history, and no one would ever see it, but as arcade lovers ourselves, we related to that you know, that Jordan Mechner that was 30, 40 years ago and uh, had no problem <laughs> making an arcade game today and seeing that vision through.